In this guide, I'll show you how to replace a hard drive in an Intel iMac. This applies to um, pretty much any of the aluminum iMac bodies, um, some of the newer ones. Uh, you can see here that I have a new hard drive. It's a Western Digital 1 terabyte Caviar Black with 32 megs of cache. That's a pretty good one. I also have with me uh, all my tools. Uh, I have a, this small set of screwdrivers that I got from Radio Shack. Uh, in addition, to that I have this uh, multiple Torx driver. This driver has, um, in the back of it, it has um, all these little guys. Uh, some of them are quite handy in, in certain situations, especially working with Macs. Um, in addition to that, I also have this uh, uh, multi-purpose Phillips and flathead screwdriver. Um, and then finally, I have a couple suction cups. Now, the first step in repairing the iMac is you need to get off this large glass screen. It's a delicate process, but pretty easy, as long as you have good suction cups. The larger they are, the better. Stick on the suction cups. You'll need to, the, the best way that I've found to do it is to put one in the top right and uh, one in the bottom left. And after you have those on in just a second, Uh, slowly and carefully pull up on both sides and kind of maneuver the glass around until it's off. It's, it's connected by magnets, so you got to be careful. Um, and after you pull it off, make sure you're careful with it uh, and make sure it doesn't crack or shatter. Uh, you should put it on a clean and protective surface. Here I have a towel. Um, and uh, just make sure it's out of the way. Make sure you don't set anything on top of it, otherwise it could get scratched. Uh, the next step in the process is removing all the screws around the border of the LCD. Uh, there are 12 screws total and you'll need to use your Torx screwdriver. Uh, one thing that you want to do while removing all these screws, you can see I'm doing it in this video, um, is to make sure you put them in a tray or a paper towel or a piece of paper with scotch tape so you don't lose them and so that you can keep them in order. If you don't keep them in order, then uh, you might end up putting the wrong screws in the wrong places. For the next step, uh, we'll need a one, number one Phillips screwdriver um, to remove the memory slot on the bottom of the iMac. So uh, you'll also need to lift up the bottom of the iMac a little bit to get to that if it's on the ground like I have it here. Uh, you can also do this earlier in the process if you have the, have the uh, state of mind to remember that. Uh, to get it off for this model iMac, you might actually need a little Phillips or a little flathead screwdriver to pry loose the cover. Um, otherwise, it might stick on a little too tight. After you do that, um, and that, that little area is clean down there, uh, you can pry loose the top of the casing. And for this, you need to be careful not to break the eyesight cable at the top middle. Uh, you can pop it up just a little bit, and then um, after that, uh, there's, you can just see I pointed to the cable there. Just make sure you don't uh, rip that cable, otherwise you won't have any eyesight anymore and uh, your computer will be somewhat blind. Um, it's, it might actually be some sort of sensor too, I'm not sure exactly what's up there. Um, you can see here I had to move the glass aside just so that I could flip this over. If you want to remove that cable, you have to take some parts off. I just flip over the lid because uh, it's a little easier that way. So the next step here is uh, you're going to remove the LCD display. It's quite an operation. Uh, first you need to pry loose the LCD temp sensor just to the right of the left speaker set. And then after you uh, pull that out, uh, unplug the LCD video connector on the right side of the screen. There are, tor two, uh, there are two torque screws that you'll need to remove here. Um, you'll want to use a small uh, flathead screwdriver also when you pry these things loose probably. And be very careful because the cables are very small. Um, there's two screws on the connector, so I'll remove those here. And again, make sure that you put these screws in a place where they remember where you got them from, otherwise you'll be having quite a, a puzzle trying to put this thing back together. Especially on laptops and things like that, it's very important to know where your screws are coming from. Now I'll pop that uh, little connector out and I'll move on to the next step in just a second here. Now the next step is uh, you're going to remove the eight torque screws that secure the LCD uh, assembly 
to the, to the black iMac casing on the back. And these screws are a little bit tougher to get out, so it requires a little bit more elbow grease, but, you know, such is life. Again, a word of warning, make sure you know where you're uh, getting these screws from and keep them in order so that putting it back together is a very easy process. The next step here is uh, you're going to remove the actual LCD display, the huge black thing. Uh, this step can take a little patience depending on how you choose to disconnect the cable behind the display. You can see I just pulled it up uh, mostly from the right side there. It should come out pretty easily. Um, and then I was originally going to use this power board here and unplug the connector from the display right to there. There's four screws holding that in. Uh, but on my iMac that was getting to be somewhat of a burden because I couldn't really pull that cable out and I didn't want to damage it. Um, so, as that was proving really difficult, I decided to just pull back the, uh, the tape holding the connector to the LCD assembly itself. And then after I did that, um, I just disconnected it straight on the display. You can see right here, I'm pulling back the tape. Um, and then uh, I disconnected it and, and put the whole display aside just to get it out of the way. Now again, be very careful with this because it's very delicate, uh, just like the glass. You want to put it in a safe area. Uh, where it won't get scratched or get too much dust on it. Now that uh, everything above the hard drive is removed, you'll need to pull down on the bracket or the clip that's holding the hard drive in place. Um, and uh, this, this actually requires quite a bit of force. Uh, so you have to be careful and kind of brace your hand against the metal bracket that's, that's holding the, the hard drive in. And then uh, after you pop that loose, uh, you can you can pull the hard drive up and then kind of towards the top of the iMac to get it out. There's two little pins at the bottom of the hard drive that uh, that hold it in. And you can see here I finally got it up and out. Uh, and then also there's a temperature sensor on the top. You'll want to peel that off uh, and kind of set that aside, let it hang somewhere. Um, if you want, you could apply some uh, high temp adhesive to it uh, to get it to stick when you put it on the new drive. But uh, other than that, you'll need to unplug the power and the serial ATA cable from the hard drive. And, uh, and uh, then once that's done, you'll want to take the brackets and the bracing screws uh, here off of the old hard drive and then put them on the new hard drive. Uh, I won't show you this step in the video because it's pretty simple. You just transfer the screws and transfer the bracket. Not that big a deal. Finally, you're going to put the new hard drive in its slot. I'm going to put it back in exactly as you took the old one out, um, making sure that you uh, plug in the serial ATA and the power cables. And you'll slide it in at the bottom and then snap it in. And after that, you'll put the temperature sensor back on top. Now, if, if it's not sticking very well, you can use a little bit of uh, high temperature adhesive. You can find that at computer stores. Or if you're like me, don't worry so much about it. As long as it's kind of near the hard drive, the temperature sensor will work fine. Finally, after uh, you have that back in and everything is kind of looking good, uh, you'll begin the process of putting everything back together. So basically, uh, you'll do everything back in reverse uh, and you'll be done. Uh, this isn't the most, <laughs> this definitely isn't the easiest procedure in the world. Uh, but I would say it's definitely easier to repair this iMac than uh, it was to repair my old PowerBook 180 or my PowerBook 190. I've done a lot of repairs on laptops over the years, and those things are ridiculous with how small everything is. Um, and uh, luckily on this one, the Torx, the Torx driver that you use isn't so delicate. I actually have broken a few of those simply because the screws are so small and you got to apply so much force to get the screws out. But anyway. Uh, you notice here that I'm also using an air duster can. You want to be sure to get all of the dust and particles off of the LCD screen as you're putting it back together, because if you have any particles on it, uh, then those will show through the glass, and that does not look good at all. Um, and you can't really clean it without taking the glass back off again. So you can see I'm just cleaning everything up, getting it ready to go. Uh, putting the memory access door back on and screwing that in, making sure I don't have any extra screws. And the final step is you want to plug in your iMac and see if it actually boots up and works. And here is the moment of truth. I got the white screen. 
Waiting for that Apple logo. And it's gotta be coming soon. <clears throat> the first time you boot it up, it might take a little bit longer for that hard drive to uh, finish uh, getting recognized and everything. And let's see, there it is. Perfect. Wonderful. If you want more information, go to my website, lifeisaprayer.com.